And like you said, we don't just drum.、Uh, we have fue, which is the bamboo flute.、Uh, we also sing. So it's a mixture of different、uh, style of music that we can we we like to perform.、Um, that is created through the travels and the encounters with the people throughout these years. Hi, and welcome to the Seek Sustainable Japan podcast. I hope you're staying cool wherever you are. Uh, here in Hiroshima, it is pretty sweltering, but one thing I love about summer is going to special summer fireworks festivals, summer music festivals, and one of those amazing festivals which I have wanted to go to for many years is the Sado Island Earth Celebration. And this is the first time they're back in full force after COVID. And in this episode, I have a chance to talk with one of the organizers, Yui Kamiya. And she was born in Japan, raised in California, and then came back to Japan and has really been a big part of this Earth Celebration event, as well as very passionate about taiko and traditional Japanese music. Now, today we are talking about the Sado Island Earth Celebration. And、uh, before we get into that, and about this really amazing part of Japan in Niigata,、um, I am so excited to go myself. This is an event that I've heard about for years.、Uh, you, you say yourself you've been a part of it for 10 years, is that right? I know it's, it's been 10 years. I never really thought about it, but it's been 10 wonderful years. That's awesome. Do you remember how you first got interested in the festival?、Um, well, the festival is organized and ran by two entities.、Uh, one is Sado City, the island, and its government, and the other is、um, the Taiko、eh, ensemble called Kodo. And so I. First, got involved because I worked with Kodo as their international tour manager and international business. And so, naturally, when you know, summer comes by, we would all be switching gears into Earth Celebration. That's so good. And you're originally from, well, you grew up in California,、mm-hmm. and you said you were introduced to Taiko at UCLA. Is that right? Yeah. So, I was just talking to you before we went live, but、um, just a quick story. I had a major identity crisis growing up in the US as a Japanese American. I try to stay away from the Japanese culture as much as possible because I wanted to be American.、Um, but, you know, UCLA and having a Japanese American community helped me shape who I am. And that's where I saw. Collegiate Taiko, that's kind of a thing in the US.、Um, and I saw Taiko at my university for the first time. And I, I felt really comfortable, I guess,、um, seeing and hearing that thump in your heart. And then soon after, I realized that, you know, there is a group that's based on Sado Island,、um, you know, and then they travel all over the world. Like, what more can you have? <laughs> and so, yeah, that, that's. Basically, how I met Taiko or saw Taiko and got to know who Kodo was. Yeah. And、uh, you appear in some of the videos on the Earth Celebration channel. And、uh, you were doing some emceeing. Do you have an official role? Are we going to see you on stage?、Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I didn't even know that was still on YouTube, but that was probably back in 2020 when COVID hit. That was the first time we obviously couldn't hold a festival、um, in 36 years. And, you know, we didn't want to hold back necessarily. And we had all of our Kodo performers and staff who were trying to do something.、Um, and we, we had so much time on our hands. So basically, what we did was we went live. On、uh, YouTube for I think two or three days. Sorry, I don't remember, but we went live. We made a lot of content. We did performances. We did like a, a car tour around the island and stuff like that, just so we can portray that vibe or the feel that we've had、uh, on Sado Island. And we wanted to share that moment with not just the people in Japan, but all over, just so that when COVID ends, hopefully everybody can. Come back to the island. So, I had the pleasure of 
am seeing for one of the days. I'm usually behind the scenes. Like I said, I, I work for the tours behind the scenes. I'm never coming out. It's kind of um, really new to me for me to talk to people in front of people. But um, I did have the pleasure of emceeing and talking about these events uh, in recent years, I guess. Yeah. And so after COVID, this is really the first year back. Is everybody excited and ready to go? Super excited. Like technically last year was our coming back because we had audience members watching the stage happening. But of course, this year is totally different again, because we get to welcome people from, you know, outside of Japan. And it brings back that international feel that we always love to have on Sado. So I'm showing the official website right now for Earth Celebration. And there are still tickets available if people want to uh, see some of the concerts. And, and there's a lot of activity around the island. And of course, the island itself is beautiful for sightseeing and enjoying amazing beaches, right? Yes, super beautiful. Um, you know, I, I'm from Los Angeles. I know what a beach looks like, but the beaches or the, the oceans here that you see on Sado is unlike no other. And it's a, it's a treat because it's kind of a hidden gem. Um, when you come to Sado, uh, outside of the Earth Celebration dates too, um, you barely see any tourists. I don't want to spill the beans here, but you barely see anybody. So it's really magical to have that beautiful sight all to yourself almost. And it's, it's just a treat to be there. Yeah. Nice. Now you sent me some photos. So before we talk about the schedule, I want you to run us through the schedule a little bit in more detail. Um, but let's go through the photos that you sent because I give, I think it gives uh, a nice, like more personal impression of what mm -hmm. it's like to be at the festival. Uh, what do we have here? That is from last year, I think we started off uh, with, we, we basically paraded around this uh, community that is the main area of our celebration called Ogi, that's the town. And so this is um, what you see up front is Kodo's performers. And then what you see in the back are performers of a band called Las Senas. And they're basically, uh, oh, I forgot. The, the way they play, but they, they, use, they basically ha use hand signals to play as an ensemble. And most of the instruments they use are Brazilian uh, samba instruments, but they also have different percussionists. And it was just a mixture of percussion, not just taiko drums, but it was a mixture of different percussion parading through Ogi. Um, and so the locals would have fun, our audience would have fun, and most and most importantly, the performers were having fun. So it was just a jolly old time. <laughs> it's awesome. And when I watch like the videos on YouTube and stuff of the performers, that's something I really, really love about it. And I'm excited to see it for myself because yeah. I, they're, not, they're having fun, right? Like they have been <laughs> practicing all year and now they get to perform and they're so expert, like complete skill amazing right but they're just smiling and enjoying <laughs> it and I just I love to see that it gives me a sense of of happiness and enjoying it too right yeah what we like to say is that our performances are complete when we have audience to watch us and so of course you know, they practice every day and prepare for this very special performance. But when you have audience watching you and having fun, that gives us energy. So um, what you showed in the first picture, it was actually raining really, really hard during that performance. <laughs> you can see the, the reflection on the floor, maybe, because it was raining all day. Um, and we managed to safely put on a performance that day. Uh, but, you know, despite the weather, everybody was having fun on stage or off. And that's the kind of uh, happiness that you would usually find at Earth Celebration. Oh, that's amazing. 
And then another one of your photos here, the, the banner with EC mm. for Earth Celebration. Is this uh, greeting people as they get through the ferry port, maybe? Mm. Uh, this is the entranceway to the Harbor Market. This EC banner is kind of like a, a symbolic, I guess, banner that you, we usually have. It used to be at one of the, the, the shrines at... Um, at Kisaki Jinja, but this particular year we had it at the gateway of the harbor market where you can find food and goods from all over Japan that has a lot of cool taste and flavor. So this is a really exciting part too. Yeah, so it's like when you see a restaurant is open and they have the Noren curtain mm. in front and now the festival is open. So we yeah. have everyone welcoming you. I love that. Yeah, and you know, we're, you know, Joy, we're both sweating in our rooms because it's been so hot in Japan. But uh, I was just saying that it's usually four to five degrees cooler on Sado Island because we're surrounded by the Japan Sea, luckily. And with that banner that you saw, you can tell that we have breeze, right? <laughs> so it is, you know kind of enjoyable in that way too <laughs> for sure i'm looking forward to that uh we are we're both sweating in our rooms in in cities but uh i think the music the music and being on the island and the great scenery as well as the amazing friendliness and welcoming nature of the local people is mm -hmm. something that i've heard from so many people who've been to this or celebration, that's really one of the big takeaways, right? You can yeah. see that vibe here in this kind of an unofficial performance, <laughs> is it? Absolutely. This is uh, the same parade that I was talking about earlier. And it's, you know, they, this, I guess, during the parade, they found a bigger location that they can, you know, congregate, and they just started another jam session. So this is just another scene that you would find on you know another performance for earth celebration or performance because you know the the performers are having fun they they're just having fun and people are just in there within that moment together so and like you said the locals are very welcoming we take pride in the festival lasting for 36 years and so which means that for 36 years uh these locals have been the host community with us um hosting the guests, the artists, the music, the culture, and everything for every summer. That's amazing. Is it mm. like one of the longest running festivals in Japan, like music or international festivals? Like I'm We'd like to see that, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm. Uh, what are we looking at here? Ah, so these ladies are Taraibune what is it? Rowers. Taraibune in Japanese, I guess, directly translates to um, a tub boat. <laughs> so it's just a round boat. Um, and it's a, I guess it's a tourist attraction now, but it used to be used back in the day. And the way you row the boat, because it's round, it's like a an eight or an infinity and it's really really tricky but these ladies do it best and uh they have the ogi ogi is the area that's uh that the the festival is held and there's a thing called ogi okesa which is a dance like a obon dance um and ogi and these are eto kasa where the dancers wear and in this case the rowers also wear these okesa okesa kasa Wow. Mm. Now, I just interviewed an American carpenter mm, who mm. was talking about Sado Island, talking about making these tugboats, these round boats, mm. uh, which he, he, he's been working with so many artisans and, and the craft of making these wooden boats is kind of dying out because they're not passing on the knowledge. It's yeah. been a secret you have to apprentice with them. So he was talking about learning it and being so grateful that he was able to learn how to make that. And then you can see it in action still on Sado Island. So you're preserving that culture through tourism and through, you know, even the dance, which is connected mm. to that style of craftsmanship. 
I mm-hmm. love I love seeing that. That's wonderful. Yeah, I love seeing that also. And the more you know, the more in depth and the history that you can learn. Uh, and it makes sense too. Like it's really interesting. I I love that about Sado Island too. Yeah, lovely. All right, what do we have here? Looks like a, a beautiful view. The mm. water just looks amazing. So this is one of my favorite places on Sado Island. It's called Senkakuang. Uh, it's located. So Sado is shaped like an S shape. Um, so if you imagine an S shape, Senkakuan is basically located on the western side of the island. So this area that you saw just on the map uh, is where Earth Celebration is held. It's on the southern tip of the S, whereas the photo that you saw earlier was is located on the western tip. And the Sado Island, the S shape, generally... The northern area is the more naturey part, while the southern part is where the, the locals live, generally. But overall, there's a lot of nature all over the island. It's just so uh, nice to drive out and just park wherever you can and just be out there. And every angle you see is just miraculously beautiful like this. <laughs> That's awesome. It looks amazing and mm. so beautiful. Um, a lot of the the scenes I've I've seen from other people's photos is, of course, the beautiful coastline, uh, the islands, the little outcrop of islands, mm. uh, the tub boats that you see, and then the birds. Like the birds on the island mm. are really special. So if you're a bird lover, uh, there are some very special birds. I found this website. Uh, on Sato's Tourism Navi about the toki birds, which are the crested ibis. Mm-hmm. And um, all about not only those birds, but there's a lot of birds that kind of uh, migrate to Sato Island and they have done for centuries and they're protected there because um, there's less pesticides used in the fields. And there was a campaign, it sounds like, uh, to preserve these special birds that have always visited the island. And so we're so happy to hear that. That's wonderful. Yeah, and toki, toki birds are just so special to Sado Island. So if you come to Sado, it, you'll, you'll see a lot of those toki birds everywhere because we love them too. And what's really nice is that the locals just leave them alone. <laughs> and uh, it, and they're just beautiful. They, they are, they're, they are, they you can see them when you drive around, you see birds with pink wings. That's when you know that it's a toki bird and they're just there. And it's really nice to be in, in the same environment with these beautiful birds that are just left um, by itself or by themselves out in the wild. And no one will just try to catch them or anything. We just leave them wow. alone. <laughs> That's lovely. Um, let's go to another photo of yours. This is so fun. It's like visiting with you. <laughs> so this is the same like festival, people just walking down the street, like a mini parade, is it? Yeah. And I guess this also talk, I can, I, I also want to talk about not just earth celebration, but, um, this is something that you would also see at festivals, uh, Matsuri in Japan, uh, in this case for Sado Island, um, we have festivals happening, uh, I guess, basically twice a year, once in the fall, once in the springtime. They both represent harvest, good harvest, and wishing good harvest, or celebrating good harvest. And um, maybe you'll have another photo of this too later but it's called ondeko onidaiko i guess and you just have a dialect and you say ondeko which also means uh, demon drumming oh yes this um basically ondeko is not drumming even though they have tiny uh, drumsticks on their hands it's mostly dancing um and it's festive it happens uh, when we want to celebrate for the good harvest. And what's fascinating is that um, almost every community has a different dance. So it's not just one dance that is shared within the island, but every community has its distinct 
dance and distinct demons or different characters. And that's what brings the community together is uh, what sustains the families because uh, like the entire Japan culture too, but the, the age is just rising higher and higher every year. But this ondeko culture, I guess, brings the, the younger generation to work together with the older generation, even if they leave the island, these matsuri is just another reason for them to come back to their homes. And it's, it's really nice to see. And so parading, of course, yes, that's really fun. And when you see the parade happening with the ondeko or the demon drums, uh, that's also something really heartful to see on Zado too. Ah, that's so cool. And I know, I mean, this is an important part of sustainability, this show we're always trying to think of ways that we're supporting our community. How are we supporting people? How are we supporting planet and the economy? And I think big events like this, which they preserve the culture, they bring so much appeal through tourism, but also for a lot of people, mm. like you said, who used to live there. And they're, they're proud mm -hmm. of what they want to go back and see and be a part of again, you know, and then people are aging all over Japan, rural communities are aging, there is not enough young people to do work. And this is a problem around Japan. And when you have something like this annual festival that people really want to come back for, it might entice them back uh, even longer, right? Uh, yeah. And I think this applies for a lot of the inaka or the countryside of Japan, but uh, more and more people who live in the, the metropolitan cities are thinking about moving into these inaka or these communities. And in Japanese, we call them aitang or like the eye turn. There's no turn in eye, so I don't know, but they still call it aitang instead of a U-turn. Um, so aitang where just, you know, people immigrate I guess, immigrate to the countryside is something that's been discussed uh, on Sado Island as well. And so nowadays, uh, I'm so surprised because every time I go back to Sado, we find a new location, uh, we find a new coffee shop or a restaurant because these younger adults decide to come out and make a living, uh, making business on Sado Island, creating new tourism, creating new uh, economy, and sharing that island culture together with the, the locals. Um, and they also have, uh, a lot of them reuse kominka, or I don't know what kominka is in English, but old, older old houses. houses. <laughs> the, the whole uh, minka, kominka remodeling renovation movement is, is really exciting yeah. because you're, you're it's taking the exciting. really valuable parts of old buildings that were made so well and have so much value mm -hmm. and you're keeping the really valuable part and then you're modernizing and making like a creative, beautiful, stylish place, but, but not throwing away everything. Right. And, and that's yeah, really cool. I love yeah. it so much. And so you'll see so many of those Kominka renovation and really cool businesses. We, I think we have a new chocolate shop, um, which is absurd, but it, it's, it's crazy, but it's, great um and they they are so fashionable and sustainable and they're just really down to earth and getting in touch with the community um there is a lot of different bars and restaurants and it's just really exciting to see these happening it's awesome isn't it because you're like reinvent reinventing culture culture and tradition doesn't mm. have to stay in the past you, you need young mm. people who understand it and then they want to take it to a new level. And I, I find that so exciting, mm. that whole innovation part, right? Yeah. And working with Kodo, um, I know this is about Earth Celebration, but because Kodo is such a core part of the, the, the festival, I think what you just said really applies to who Kodo is right now, too. Because um, if you, I guess, Google Kodo, a lot of people might think that we're a a performing arts group that puts on tradition and just tradition but we have performers who are young as I guess 20 years old to our oldest member being 75 or something you know we have a huge range huge generation gaps 
But at the same time, we all perform on the same stage. We reinvent, um, reinvent, I guess, performing arts tradition and make it something more accessible for other people to get to know who Kodo is, what Japanese culture can be, what Japanese music can be. So we like to say that we're not a taiko group that uses just taiko, but especially for Earth Celebration too, you will see Jamaican instruments or, you know, I think we've had Bali instruments and I guess instruments that we found in all over the world when we travel and tour and we put it into our music and we reinvent who we are and constantly update our music and performing style. So yeah, I I think what Sado Island is doing right now totally applies to who Kodo is as an ensemble right now. That's so exciting. And and like you said, Kodo has become... Uh, it's a huge part of this Earth Celebration Festival, but it has become an export from right going around the world and, and doing these performances. And uh, you also have mm. some international uh, people who are a part of the event this year, Kodo and the Voices of South Africa. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Yeah, um, this is our, I guess, first time in four or five years to have an international guest, which we are super duper excited about, um, because I think that speaks the heart of what Earth Celebration's mission uh, has always been, is the mixture of cultures through music. And so um, the Voices of South Africa, these uh, performers are phenomenal. We've had uh, the opportunity to perform with them once in Belgium, right before the pandemic. And it was absolutely beautiful. And we're super excited to finally welcome them to Sado Island to perform in front of a Japanese crowd. Um, That was supposed to happen, I guess, during the pandemic. And it just took us a little bit a while uh, for it to actually happen. That's why we're super, even super duper excited for this to happen. I love love how you say super duper. It's so cute. I grew up up with my grandma saying that. Um, Maybe uh, let's continue with your photos and then we'll talk more about the schedule a little bit. Mm. Um, So we talked about the Oni Daiko. Now you mentioned about some of the food. What are we looking at here? Mm. Uh, I think this is called an Oni (laughs) Mang. And it's part of the vendors that you would find at um, the Harbor Market. The vendor lineup has not been released yet officially, but we usually have a mixture of local and, um, I guess, vendors from outside of the island um, providing food and goods within the market. And so this is one of the Sado vendors that uh, is really, really popular. I mean, I've seen dorayaki before, right, with the fish. Uh, and mm. the sweet beans mm, inside, mm, mm, mm. but this looks really hard to make uh, because of the horns and the, <laughs> the details, right? <laughs> and I think it's the sado shape too. If you look at it closely in the background, it's the the whole manju is shaped right. like the island. <laughs> yeah, I see it now. And then what's what's inside? Is it a sweet bean or something? I think this one in particular was sweeping, but they had a couple other choices, maybe more this year if they decide on uh, putting out a, a shop this time too, but we'll see. It's usually a nice And surprise. I love that blue sky background. How gorgeous is that? Yeah. Uh, let's continue on the <laughs> food co- theme. Co- now you, moment. of course, being on an island, uh, there's a lot of wonderful mm. local fish if you're a seafood fish fan, right? Yes, uh, because Sado Island is located on the west coast of Japan. Uh, Japan Sea is known for really good fish because in the su- in the winter time it gets really cold, and which means the fish gets fatty. Um, and so <laughs> we get really good f- fish and clams, and um, the restaurants that you would see. Um, or the restaurants that you would find on Sado Island mostly provides local fish and local Which catch. is much, much more sustainable. That's what we want to see. If you're going to eat mm. fish, you want it mm. to support the local fisher people, right? 
Yeah. As yeah. well as taste fresh and tastes great too. It's super fresh. Really oh, awesome. great. Um, maybe if you run us through the schedule a little bit and uh, I'm showing the the website and people can still buy tickets on the website too, right? Yes. Still buy tickets on the website. I think um, there are different, a lot of things happening throughout the weekend. It goes from August 18th to the 20th. Friday to Sunday. Um, and during the day, during the night, there's a lot of things happening in the Ogi area uh, and free events and ticketed events. And so free events, of course, just come by <laughs> and watch what you want to see. But for ticketed events, I would totally recommend um, getting tickets in advance, uh, especially for the final, I mean, uh, the, the Harbor Live concerts which happens at nighttime on every uh single day of the the festival uh those run out pretty quick because they become really popular uh so far uh, the concert that i just talked about with the voices of south africa has been really really popular and so if you are contemplating on coming i would totally recommend you getting tickets uh as soon as possible mm -hmm. And then uh, how do people get to and from the island? It's by ferry, right? Yeah. And so a lot of people don't realize that Sado is really big. <laughs> if you try to drive the circumference of the, the island, it maybe takes me four to five hours. Um, so just keep in mind that it is big. Um, to get to Sado Island, there's two main ferry ports. One is called Byotsu, which is the main port, uh, which is on the east coast of Sado Island. But what I would recommend is to coming through, come through the Nawetsu port or Ogi port. That's Nawetsu is where it starts on Niigata, and Ogi is where it takes you to. Um, it only has two ferries a day, but that's basically going to take you right to the venue. So I would totally recommend trying to catch that. In order to do that, if you're coming from Tokyo, uh, you would take the Shinkansen from Tokyo to Joetsu Myoko, uh, and then a bus to the ferry port, and then pop on the ferry, and just takes you right there to the venue. And they do have a car ferry as well as a hydrofoil, right? So if you if you wanted to bring your yeah. car over, it's pretty useful having a car to get around the island. Yeah, uh, it's, I would definitely recommend having a car to get around the island um, because it's so vast and a lot of people have different schedules. Uh, it's probably most ideal to have your own transportation to get around. Yeah, awesome. Um, so we've covered the schedule. We've covered some of the local sightseeing that you can do and the conservation and everything. Uh, let's have a look at... Uh, photos from German International's Hana. Uh, she went a few years ago and uh, she really enjoyed uh, being there. And there's a few sites that we didn't see yet uh, worth talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, so what are we looking at right now? Uh, this is part of a community called Shukunegi, which is uh, very close to all the concert and event venues for Earth Celebration. It's part of the preserved community um, areas. Uh, and if I can talk about this correctly, I believe it used to be a fisherman's port, uh, which was the gateway to Sado Island for imports and exports. And that community has still been preserved really nicely. What you see right now is also Shukunegi. Shukunegi is the name of the area, is it? Yeah. Yes. So uh, the preserved old buildings, uh, we, we go back to talking about uh, people who are taking the old buildings and renovating them, turning them into guest mm. houses, cafes, or living in them themselves, right? Um, so it's, it's really nice mm -hmm. to be able to see the old communities preserved like this. That's really nice. Yeah, and they have a strict role of, not putting out laundry outside, you know, just so that 
uh, the, this is a really popular tourist attraction too. Um, and we want to make sure that whoever that visits this area can see what the, the fishermen community actually look like. But at the same time, you will see great cafes inside one of these houses, you know, stuff like really cool surprises like that too, is what Sato That's has so to nice. offer. And beautiful statue of a couple holding hands mm. and smiling. It's very unusual. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I actually never seen oh, this yeah. picture before or this statue before. I, I wonder Hana, where it is. Uh, she's, a, she's got a great eye for detail. So I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely be taking lots of photos and videos <laughs> myself and I'll seek this one out. We'll have to ask her. Mm -hmm. And then this says takoboshi. Is this like a restaurant? This is another e restaurant or izakaya located inside Shukunegi. So like I said, um, the, the community is really beautiful, really well preserved. But once you find an open business and you walk in, it's just a whole nother world. And it's just really beautiful. And what I love about these restaurants is that they're not too big. And so you get to have like a tight knit communication with the owners and the, the regulars there. Um, just, you know, small stuff like that just adds on to the experience that you will have yeah. at Sado. Definitely. I love that. Uh, let's keep going. So the same area, the preserved area. I love mm. this bamboo uh, fence. There's, there's yeah. been a trend in the yeah. last 10 years for a lot of fences to be made to look like bamboo, but they're made of plastic. And so I'm really happy when I see actual bamboo being used because it's such a sustainable That's resource. True. It grows super fast. We have lots of it in Japan. So it's fabulous to see it, the real bamboo being used. There's a, an abundance of bamboo on Sado Island too. And there has been artists and craftsmen who started to create uh, baskets and uh, artwork with these bamboos too. What we saw earlier with the hats, uh, those are also weaved with bamboo as well. So it's really nice to see different ways of using bamboo into arts and crafts and, you know, living and community and stuff like that um, just really adds to the beauty of oh, it all. Fantastic. I love to see a, a fresh green bamboo grove right and mm. to see the shoots coming up and and then uh whenever i do tours i always take them by a bamboo grove in our local gardens and i say you you can eat mm. it you can wear it you can use it to build things for shelter or tools so true like like yeah. endless possibilities plus it gives us shade so true. you know and yeah huge bamboo fan <laughs> Yeah, I second so that. this is one of the evening performances. Yes, um, this I think took place actually inside a small theater house in uh, in the Shukunegi community. Uh, we've had the pleasure of being able to use uh, the theater house that's been you know used for years and years. And this year, we unfortunately we don't have any programs within that theater house, but sometimes we do. Um, and if you are interested, we usually have performances during Golden Week um, holidays in Japan uh, called the Shukunegi Hall. And this was one of the performances that happened inside that Shukunegi Hall, which only fits, I think, 150 people. So it's a really um, small but intimate uh environment to just listen to the drums see what's happening and it's it's a beautiful experience. yeah and when i was going through your videos on youtube i'll share the link below um there's some like singing as well as uh mm. she's wearing such a beautiful kimono and there's amazing costumery and in, in other performances and in other parts of the event so there is a lot of taiko drumming which is fantastic but it's, you've got a different pace, yes. right? You've got like an up-down pace of different kinds of activities, uh, different kinds of music as well. Yeah. And this picture in particular shows one of our distinguished members. Called, uh, her name is Chieko Kojima. And she's amazing. She's one of our um, founding members of the group. Um, and Koto has been around for over 40 years uh, 
50, including the president group. And so Chieko has been there this entire time. And she's one of our amazing performers. She will be, oh, she's this top left corner. <laughs> and she has a distinct style of performing taiko drums while dancing. Um, and it's just really mesmerizing to see. And like you said, we don't just drum. Uh, we have fue, which is the bamboo flute. Uh, we also sing uh, yoko, uh, Fujimoto, and uh, turquoise that you see there too is also an amazing singer. So it's a mixture of different uh, style of music that we can we we like to perform um, that is created through the travels and the encounters with the people throughout these years. Oh, how wonderful. I can't wait. Hmm. And then this is one of the outdoor stages, is it? Yes, I believe so. Um, so the highlight, I guess, the big highlight for our celebration is, like I said, the harbor concerts that happen every night of the concert. That's outside, right next to the port, actually. When you come in, um, there's a, a park right by the ocean, and that's where the, the concert venue is. And it's just really i guess rewarding and beautiful to see live music in general under the stars uh sado island barely has any street lights so when it's at nighttime it's super dark uh but because it's dark you can see all the the stars shining at night and it's just rewarding to see everything in your peripheral vision i guess um and just fingers crossed that the weather will hold. <laughs> but like I said, even if it does rain, um, if it is safe for us to do so, the concert happens and people still have a really great time. And I think that's the magic of the vibes that the perform, not just the performers and staff, but the audience creates together to make this um, celebration happen. Yeah. That's so, I, it's so important, right? If you're, if you're there for the festival, rain or shine, you're going to go ahead. Mm. You're going to have a good time, you know, fingers crossed for clear skies, but we'll go ahead. We'll still have a great event, you know? So yeah. it's always tricky <laughs> when you plan these big outdoor events, right? We've, we've done a lot in Hiroshima as well. And you're always like, oh, is it going to rain? But uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, this looks like a very special performance. Mm. Uh, this is called Shishi Odori, which is a folk performing art form from Iwate Prefecture. Uh, it's usually danced with uh, Shishi, which is uh, not the Shishimai Shishi, but it's a different Shishi. It's a deer, deer dance. And so in Iwate Prefecture, the locals dance with a mask on. Um, what Koto likes to do is we like to learn from the locals of all the different folk performing art form and we learn, we spend time with them, we drink and, you know, become friends with them. And then we are, we get really lucky for those locals who understand our art form and gives us the respect to uh, put it on stage as part of our production. So this is, what you see on the picture is one of the examples of that happening. And so we recreate, I don't want to say recreate, but we, we reimagine um, Shishi Odori into our performance. And that's what you yeah. see here. I love the, the costume spell. So the drums and then the really unique, is it made of feathers behind it? These oh, are bamboo. bamboo. Wow. So, and so uh, you will, if you see this in person, um, you'll see these performers drumming at the same time they go around. And what they do is they slap on the floor, these bamboo shoots. And that's also the rhythmic part of the whole performance. Um, it's really hard to explain it verbally. You just have to, it's one of those things you have to see it in person, but it's, a lot of athleticism and musicality put together. <laughs> I, was, I was watching John Dobbs' amazing video only in Japan. Uh, he did so many wonderful videos uh, when he was covering the event a few years ago and, and really featuring uh -huh. all the amazing athleticism, like you said, of the Taiko drummers and mm. how much you guys train over the year. It's, it's almost every day, isn't it? 
Yeah, so our performers, they, this is what they do for a living. And so um, it, they do keep themselves fit and they practice every single day. Um, I'm going to sidetrack a little bit, but beca to become a quota performer, you have to go through a two-year apprenticeship. And the two the apprentice center is located also on the island, which is an hour away from where we're located. They're in an abandoned schoolhouse. Um, so we're, I guess, reusing an abandoned schoolhouse for these apprentices who are age 18 to 25. We usually have almost 20 of the uh, 20 apprentices living communally. Um, they cook and eat together, they practice together, um, they learn how to prepare fresh fish, they farm, they, um, they harvest their own rice, and they also start their day off, um, they, they start their day at 5 a.m. Uh, to go running. <laughs> you know, they go run um, at the crack of dawn, and after that, they prepare breakfast, eat together, and then they finally start practicing. And um, it's just the routine that they all have to go through for two years. Only the selected few gets to be a performer. So I think that's what also gives that special vibe for our performers to put on a performance that are so tightly knit together. I'm just showing some of uh, the feed of John's, John's Only yeah. in Japan video. From, from the Earth Celebration, oh, oh. and he really did a great in-depth look at all the Kodo drummers and and showed a bit of that off-season training time. And I thought I thought that mm, was mm, really mm. amazing. Yes, and ooh, you'll see where Kosato Island is located too. There you see. That little <laughs> butterfly island, it's almost called, right? <laughs> That's true. It is a butterfly. We like to say it's an S shape, but I, I, I like butterfly better. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So I'll put the link below. You should definitely watch the whole video. It's fabulous. Mm. Yeah. Um, so what is your favorite part? You've been a part of so much of the festival for 10 years. Do you have any personal favorites? Um, I guess my personal favorite comes from my roles for Earth Celebration every year, it keeps changing because uh, I like to try new things all the time. So I've been at the information desk. I've been, you know, I'm PR right now, but I've been backstage. And what led me to, I, I guess, after doing different roles for the, cele uh, for the festival led me to this conclusion that what I love about the festival the most is just the people that I get to meet and the people that actually travel all the way out to Sado. You know, everybody has their own stories and really cool background stories of how they got to this island is what fascinates me and what I look forward to hearing every single year because, um, you know, it's just, such a, a beautiful thing for everybody to to come together on the island it's not easy <laughs> you know the transportation honestly can be a little bit um confusing if you're not used to the japanese transportation system um and if you are confused don't hesitate to contact us and we're happy to help you you know lead you the right way and so like i said it's not easy and for people thousands of people to be there in one spot to listen to music be under the same sky is just really miraculous to me and when I get to talk to people it that adds on to the beauty beauty of the event so I think to me my favorite part is to meet people who come to Sado that's <laughs> awesome yeah and and people who come who make the effort like you said it might not be easy to yeah. get there um, I'm just showing from the Earth Celebration channel. This is one of my favorite, one of my personal favorites. Mm. Uh, just going to add the sound just for a minute. And I was listening to your talk with your MC, and he was doing a lot of this video, right? So the mm. video is done by photo members as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
of our COVID-19 or celebration. I mean, if, if just hearing that, if that doesn't make you want to go, I don't know, right? Like, that must be, and for someone and who's that, practiced Kodo, that must make you really excited to hear that, right? Yeah, and that performance in particular is really special to our entire company because I think we have a really strong group of female performers in the troupe uh, that are really really great performers as you can see in the uh, in the video um and we're really proud that we have not just female but just really great performers that represents the company right now um they all have great character and i think joy what you told me earlier about seeing them all smiles um i think that's that's that adds on to who kodo can be and will be um as you see in the concert too yeah, fabulous. And I think, you know, in Japan, we are struggling with gender imbalance in, in many different areas of society. Um, but to see women who are so powerful, strong, and enjoying themselves, I think it's a great example for all of us, how we want to live our lives. I love it. Mm, yeah. We've got a great comment from Hana. Hana, thank you so much for sharing your wonderful photos with us that we showed earlier. Uh, such a wonderful and insightful conversation. Thank you. I was lucky enough to experience the Earth Celebration back in 2019. I love the sense of community. Music really brings people together. That's awesome. Thanks, Hana. Yay. So good. And, and you have a lot of people who come who are really interested in music, maybe musicians themselves, but you also have a lot of people who are just interested in the community vibe, the island culture. There's a variety of reasons that people want to come to the Earth Celebration, right? Yeah, and that's why I love talking to um, all the, the audience, or I don't know how it's, oh yeah, the audience or the guests that we have on Sado Island. Like, I find myself just having random chats with everybody whenever I get the chance to, because some people know who Kodo is, some people don't. And some people know what our celebration has been in the past, but some people just heard about it and just decided to, you know, make their way out so I just love hearing and knowing that there's a diverse group of people that are gathered and um, it's, it's a miracle <laughs> that's awesome well thank you so much Yui for joining me today and giving us a bit of an overview of this year's celebration but I think it's it's more than that right like even if you can't make it this year for the event hopefully you'll you'll keep it in mind and uh, go in future years. And I think this year, though, I am going, and I'm very excited to be mm. at the after COVID, we are back, Sato Island Earth Celebration. Come and Definitely. join us. There's still tickets available. Uh, they still have space in the campgrounds, right? Yes, it's gonna be fun. So awesome. much fun. Thank you so much, Yui. And uh, if you're interested, check out all the links below. And uh, we'll see you there. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Have a great day. Change. I love you just the way you are.